Hello everyone, this is 705 coming at you guys with another product of commentary. Today I'm casting MSPR Koro against Orange. So two Malaysian teams going up against each other and I'm joined by my co-commentator Luminous. And? And how are you doing today? See, uh, oh man! Man, if, you, if you're trying to jack over my channel, you gotta do it properly. What are we at, 30, 35 seconds in? Yeah, 35 seconds. Okay. Hey everyone, this is Luminous. Here's a proper introduction. Uh, we have uh, Orange on Scourge and uh, MSPR on Sentinel. And uh, this is a CM remake. And then here you see all the heroes being picked in the AP game. So unfortunately, we don't have the bands, but let's look at what we have uh, on the table. You want to talk about any particular side or you want to talk about the players? Actually, what do you want to talk about, 715? Uh, I think I'm going to talk about the lineup a bit. Um, Scourge for first, because what, what I see there so far is uh, they have a, well, actually both both teams have a very aggressive lineup, but I see the last strike on Scourge going for a lot of pushing, but surprisingly they don't really back up the, the last strike with any real pushing heroes, so we see a Podem, we see a Windrunner, so a, a lot of gank. And we see a Weaver, so that looks really interesting to me because it's like three solo lanes with good escape skills and also the decent gank power combined with that Weaver, so so to me it will be interesting how Scourge is going to try to win this game, because I can't really tell, actually I expect them to, to try to gain an advantage by ganking and then just out carrying the... Sentinel with their two strong CMA carries and that Weaver, I guess. Yep. So how do you think a Sentinel is going to win the game? Uh, before I talk about Sentinel, well, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that. What I'm saying. I'll talk about the game flow um, after I talk about Sentinel team, which uh, directly implies to that. But if you look at Sentinel lineup compared to the Scourge, Scourge is a lot squishier by nature, especially if you're dealing against the Epicenter, if you're dealing against a Venom Answer O. The Lesh, the Podum, Weaver, Windrunner, all is going to take a huge bidding. Uh, we have quite a bit of, I mean, if you think about Omni Knight, his teal, 360 pure damage, that is insane. Uh, Venge actually will be uh, hurting quite a bit as well, single target with the Magic Missile and also the uh, Terror and the Command Aura. So a lot of these spells and these auras and all the stuff is going to be very damaging on the Sentinel. And they have a Silence, and Silence is so important, especially when you're doing Acropolis. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys, reviewers out there, have been playing this lately if you click on the level 4 silence it's a huge aoe it's a huge aoe and if you drop it on two or three heroes especially a lesh or let's say an ogre they are done they they are done for five six seconds um you know maybe 30 minutes in a game that is extremely crucial in terms of limiting a lot of scourge's offensive power as well um so it, if you look at the comparison, I, I think the team fight is going to go to the central in that sense. But Scourge a lot more mobile as Scourge uh, as 715 point out. The Leap, the Sakuchi, and the Windrun are going to be helping them in terms of positioning themselves in team fights. But um, yeah, I was talking about how this game flow would go, if so to speak. And the way I see it is, I think Scourge will have the advantage in terms of... I think they have better laning uh, in terms of having pot on Windrunner, having good focus single target stun of the Ogre, and then a follow-up stun of the Split Earth. So in terms of yes, laning... And, and I want to interrupt you shortly sure. because we already see Sentinel Rewards being picked up by the Leshrac, which indicates that... And we have Smoke of Deceit on Ogre, so probably Scourge going really, really aggressive so far. Yes, like they both will ward the enemy wards and start roaming. Yeah, both gonna be using that sentry ward to maybe even counter off a couple wards on the uh, uh, sentinel end as well. So they're gonna be looking aggressive. They will have the laning to their side. So in theory, in theory, they should be uh, having advantage uh, in the early stage of the game. I, I feel like the scourge is definitely a stronger mid game lineup here. Even though the scourge sentinel excuse me is a stronger mid game lineup. Even though scourge has you know Potom, uh, Windrunner, and and. Weaver, I, I feel like these heroes require a little bit more farm to be effective, whereas Sentinel is going to be using their level and using their hero to be effective, because Venomancer needs 11, and he's quite effective. Same thing with the Sand King. Um, Omni Knight needs the level as well to access all spell, and same thing with the crop. Yes, item is going to help out uh, the Sentinel lineup, but mostly level is kind of be the important thing, and once you hit the mid-game, the Sentinel team is going to shrine. After that, it's going to go back to Scourge, in my view, because... Here's where the bottom, the Windrunner, and the Weaver is going to start sh uh, shining. Here's where we have the Bloodlust from the Ogre. 
or is that blood, bloodless? Whatever that his buff yeah, is, yeah, yeah. that's gonna be really effective. And and actually, Lesh is, isn't too bad as a late game intelligence. Same thing with the ogre as well. So, uh, that's when the scourge will will come out. This is how I see the game play out before even knowing anything about this game. Do you disagree with me on that regard? Or no, I th I think I actually agree so far, and I also th think we should uh, go into that game and stop. Okay. Looking at the scoreboard. And, and usually we uh we we do pick ban analysis for ten minutes. This is short, right? But uh, okay. Well, no 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 ban. So <laughs> no ban. All right. <laughs> okay. Let us in pause in three, two, one, go. Thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight. Yep, all, right. all right. Okay. Let's look at the lanings here. We do have Potom going to bot, and it's gonna be an ogre lesh Potom trialing. Very very offensive heavy. And let's just hope the Potom don't pick an arrow at level four, cause. That's pretty much a fail trolling there. But Windrunner is going to be solo mid, very standard solo mid there. And Weaver solo top, very safe lane for him. Meanwhile, Sentinel looks like we have... Hmm, this is going to be interesting. Cropless maybe going top solo. Uh, we have... Ooh, this is... Omni's going to be going mid. Confused, sir. This is confusing. What do you think? I'm not too sure. I think I think uh, these two I supports are warding. we'll have crop, crop on mid. Okay. And... That, that Vino probably going for a down lane seems like SK and Venture are a bit of a roaming maybe. Yeah, I suppose that's the case here. Uh, one thing I want to point out about Yamate's uh, item set is that he has not spent all of his 600 gold yet. In fact, he's only spent. Oh, there we go. Spent quite a bit. Still have 200 gold in the bank. Going for that quick bottle is that his goal. Uh, sensor wards gotta be very careful. I, I think considering that they're warding top, I think that's where they expect the trialing to be. But unfortunately for them, the trialing is gonna be on the bot. And uh, they really need one warder to keep the crop safe because he is very, very easily ganked. Especially if you have such aggressive ganking lineup like we pointed out earlier. The smoke of the seat, the sentry wards to counter uh, enemy wards. So definitely... Um, uh, this crop list will have a little bit of trouble in the early stage of the game. Yes, and uh, do, do you want to talk about crop in general? Because I think we could do it a bit since we have seen crop being picked quite a lot lately, also in a lot of European games, but well, the hero is not that popular, but it, it's rising in terms of popularity. Probably going up in your hero tier list as well, I hope. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I'm going to pause the game at 2.30. 2.30? Okay, get a pause right now. Alright, 2.31, 2.32. A little bit of tech issues. Still lagging a little bit on fraps. Hopefully we should uh, settle down. But let's talk about Crabless as a hero. I feel like she needs a lot of item to be effective, and I guess that's why... Uh, she isn't picked as much as if you have a horrible early game, you're kind of done. Like you don't give the team that that push you have. You don't give a team your team that team fight that you really need. And also, she needs quite a bit of level to also work with. So very restrictive hero in that sense. But if you get the ball rolling, she actually is one of the huge, the best DPS uh, mid game hero there is. Like her, you cannot underestimate how much damage that exorcism does. So a great pusher, great team fight with a silence. Very few hero, very few carry heroes to be specific have that AoE silence that could really abuse. Um, sometimes you even take the place of BKB if you position yourself good enough. Uh, looks like we might have a, some sort of a ganking attempt as we see that tower already tanking, uh, or the tower being tanked by that creep. And here we go, they're trying to focus down on the uh, Venomancer. Venomancer Gale miss, and they're gonna find him under the trees. There is gonna be a fire blast, but they don't have the ledge to follow up. So this is overall not a pretty good position. Ogre taking quite a bit of damage, trying to tangle through but there's a splitter off and venomancer is gonna go down who is gonna pick up the last hit and is gonna be extinct on the orange ledge player but the tower is just doing a significant amount of damage right now ogre actually will go down to the tower or no here comes avenge Venge's gonna claim the kill there so overall uh, not the best trade i suppose because even though they got the first blood it is gonna be the venomancer that is gonna get the last laugh here as he is gonna pick up the kill actually we have ledge coming back in with the diabolic eater gonna claim one kill there tower focusing and Potom, Potom is going to go down as well. This first blood is absolutely ridiculous. And Lesh actually is going to go down as well. So three kills in terms of experience going to the Venom Master. Hitting level four right off the and bat. Minute two. Minute two. I felt like I talked for an hour there. So someone fight back to you. Uh, yeah, that's true. So I, I was just... Uh, you saw that Potom arrow? That one was awesome. Like shooting against the wall and then it, it made a longer stun on bench even it didn't matter. But it was actually some clever play, I like that. Uh, on the mid, so we see Krobel is picking up the bottle and yeah, I wanted to talk about that hero. You said you feel like Krob needs a, it needs a lot of items. Uh-huh. 
But I wouldn't exactly agree on that. I think it's really based a lot on on the enemy lineup. Like, if 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 you are able to to get a, a decent amount of farm or like an okay amount of farm, and you pick up your face boots and maybe a Django, you are freaking like you're quick. You are so damn quick that actually allows you to to go to run in and out of the fight all the time and. If if possible, you don't give the enemy a real, the really the opportunity to focus you. So you're, you're still going to be fine. You're still going to do a lot of damage, but that really depends on the enemy lineup. Like I I had games with crop where I ended up be being ganked like a lot in the mid, and then I had like maybe maybe face boots, maybe a vitality booster around minute around minute 15, and that's like that's almost nothing. But in that mid-game fights, you can really get something going. While well, you see Crop being ganked right now as well from the Ogre, just diving for that tower, and the Vira is going to claim the kill there. So yeah, interesting to see that Crabless knew that. He, maybe I think actually she might have survived, or maybe the Night Slow would have been too much for her to handle. Instead, instead she's gonna turn around, try to do as much damage uh, to the uh, Windrunner as possible. Looking on the top lane here, we have Sand King and a Omni Knight. What a what a dual lane, right? Sick combination of Burrow Strike in into a purification. I suppose that work actually could do a number against this low HP Weaver. But um, yeah, going back to the crop list, is you were saying that it depend, it's game dependent. Is this the game where you need to tank up a little bit, or this is a game that you could skimp out and maybe just go for the face boot and Django? I think this this game is well. I think the option to tank to tank up is always there. That will always work every game. But I think this would be a game where face boots and and Django, for example, work as well, or because. They don't really have. They they have an arrow. Like that's that's the no, only. No, they have. You could they have the ogre start. stun and the split earth. Like that. Yes, it, they it, ha they have it. But you can just wait behind, let your team tank those spells, and I then see. you can run it. That that's what you can do here. But you got gotta be careful. For example, when they have a clockwork, I see. that can can put you in huge, huge, huge trouble. And there you probably need to tank up because when clockwork is is, is doing well, then it'll just get you. And then, then the team is actually able to follow up with a lot of stuns. Definitely. So and you, you, so you said that Krob uh, didn't do well there. Is, is it because you like that guy? You don't like Yamate? <laughs> yeah, Yamate... Definitely not one of my favorite players, despite that he's such a well-known player, such a high-profile player. I, You know, remember, I think back in last year's WDC, there was a Yafit versus Yamate show match on Shadow Fiend. I, I secretly cheer for Yafit, so... and. Um, yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah, 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 it's one. Yeah, as well. So, uh, I mean, I he's, he's a very respected player. I, I personally don't like him a lot, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I come off as a hater to a lot of uh, pro players. Like for example, I don't really like Vigos, and I see tomorrow after this video gets posted, like all my subscribers are gone. Like what the fuck? Um, <laughs> How can you not like Vigos? The only the only pro player from the Western world I only really really like is Mer Merlini. And then people be like, "Whoa, he's Chinese! You fucking racist!" <laughs> so uh, I don't oh, know, that's, man. That's... You don't like milk? No, I love milk. I love milk, and pusher. Uh, but but they're exception because they're MYM. So and, and pusher, nice. nice and pusher, like, yeah. And mania, yeah. so kind of like them as well. But hey, okay, let's get back to this game. Uh, Weaver on the top lane doing okay. We have only that has 27 and 11 creep kills. Holy mother effing cow! Farming really well right there. Uh, Weaver, on, in comparison, only got eight and two. So apparently, this this dual main lane, lane controlling it up. And what what do we see on the tanking? Guy has the boots, so you know he's not a bootless tanking. No, he's gonna be effective. Got that boots, he's, he's coming for you. Yeah, he could he could at least in, go in the burrow strike, right? And let's right. see. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, go. No, I was talking about, I'm, I'm surprised that the Weaver is getting no farm top. And usually when that happens, it's like, okay, we're going to give up one lane uh, in hopes that we could get another dominating lane going on somewhere else. So let's see where the dominating lane is. It looks like it's going to be the mid lane. As you see, Krobles, uh died once and now being forced to TP back. This Ogre doing quite a bit of work there. There's an Ignite Blast. And now this is so much right-click power with that double damage. It's going to claim the kill as we see Mushi. Outlaning Yamate by quite a bit. 40 and 15 is the CS. Two kills against Yamate. Yeah, two gangs. Fucking lame. Well, come on. Yamate can't do shit, okay? Well, two, two, two gangs from Ogre. That's unfair. <laughs> I, I, uh, are you saying that because uh, you don't like the mid player uh, on, on Scourge? 
I, no, no, I'm always the uh, action going on on the bot. I mean, Numenta dropping that out, and Lashrak is going to go down to those dots, but Venge is in trouble as well. The explosion doing a lot of damage, and Potem claiming the deny, but the <laughs> Numenta wards are all over the Potem, but she's going to be fine. Words of Venge turn around, Terror kill going crazy, but we have the Ogre coming on the bottling as well, trying to get the 8 minute rune, unless it's going to be top or bottom. It is going to be a regen rune on the top. Very lucky Sanking there. We're not going to find that winner, and she would know. Is this war misplaced on Scourge's side? Let's see. Or Let's just wait. Ward? This is war, this ward up the hill. Yep, it's misplaced. I, I cannot believe I'm seeing that in a pro game, but whatever. Where? Where? I didn't see. On up the hill. Up the hill on the top Sentinel Scourge side. I mean, top river Scourge ramp. Oh, uh, that. Uh, yeah, that, that's a misplaced. Yes. That's... Ah, face bomb. How, how can that happen in a pro game? But Weaver gonna get that tower denied. So they're losing out farm on the Weaver uh, to get a lot of farm on the Windrunner. Windrunner already have the face boots. Probably gonna go for Mecha, although four staff is always poss a possibility. I think Mecha though is highly likely considering that you're up against Sanking Ult, you're up against Venom Ult, you need that Mecha for that AoE heal. So that is gonna help out the early game team fight. Um, I'm just really worried about their late game because Weaver is the only hope of late game. Of course, Potom can get big, but uh, that's a long shot as we see Sanking here uh, being joined by his teammate. They're gonna try to go into this Ogre and Lesh, but they are very, very damaging in terms of nukes. They're gonna try to circumvene this and go. For the we uh, go for the weaver on top, they can actually nuke down the weaver if you burrow strike in and purification and nuke him once or twice, he, he is done. Uh, so but I think weaver is he also recognized that, so he's gonna play it very, very safely and, and stay back. Yeah, didn't you say earlier that you are not worried about the late game for the for the scourge? Well, uh, considering if weaver gets farmed, but right now it looks like he is not getting farmed. Here we go, team fight is gonna be happening. Who are they gonna focus? They're gonna try to focus down on the Omni Knight, but it's gonna be hard. He pops a repel right now, a very, very low HP, he pops a guardian angel as well. They're gonna focus on Sanking. Sanking, uh, yeah, he's gonna die to Diabolic the Eater, which by the way hits everything, even including magic immunity heroes. Uh, invisible hero as showcased against the Sanking there. And now we're gonna try to bring down the Omni Knight, but running very, very quickly with our arcane boot already finished. Potom not having having the mobility chase out there and that should be the end of the fight as we see Weaver finally getting a little bit of breeding room to farm on the top lane. Uh, yeah, but actually I think uh, Scourge is quite still still off quite good because that right now the Windrunner is going fat and they actually have have a good amount of disables, at least they have more more disabled than the Sentinel team. They have the Shackle Shot which is going to do a lot uh, in late game, they have the, the natural Hex Carry on the Windrunner. They have the arrow, they have the ogre stun, they have the stun on the lash rack, so... So I feel like they're off a bit better because on, on the Scourge there's only really the... Uh, on Sentinel, excuse me, there's only the Sand King stun and the Venge stun, and that's basically it, and the silence, but... In late game, yes, it's questionable how much that is going to do. But, well, uh, s still for the early game, I, I don't... I, or the mid game, as you said, I really see this Krobolus raping the Scourge team right now because... And hero is just it's just insane. It's so much damage and if if you if you've never tried out Krobolus playing with a medallion yet, then you should definitely do it. Because your spirits, they do hero damage, it's affected by armor, and when you medallion someone and right click him while all just running, it's go it's it's massive. Massive Fucking amount massive. of damage, yeah. And also, of course, Medallion gives you a little bit of armor, extra armor to work with. It gives you some mana regen, which is never bad in Krobulus. Krobulus, by the way, has been saving up a little bit of gold right now. 1600 gold. I would think, I mean, if I have 1600 gold right now, I will either go Strain Treads or finish that face boot, or go for some Vit Booster for a little bit of survivability. But no, not going for any of those. So I'm, I'm wondering what Yamate is saving up. Although Yamate generally likes to save up a huge truckload of gold before actually spending it all. So it could mean a lot or it could mean nothing and we see deny being done by winter very well done there against Krobulus and the entire army of sentinel so very very well done there and, uh, and you see that spirits actually killing the the scrubs from the weaver yep that is going to be cool very important as uh i mean one of the best thing about weaver is hey he shoots a swarm and you, you either attack and kill the bug or the bug's going to lower your armor but you know Krobulus says low i pop oh where are you at and that's actually going to help out his team as well so um, pretty good. Yep, yeah, pretty, pretty good. And 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 I like, and I don't know the word for it, but there are those guys that come into your house and cl clean up all the bugs or what ugly stuff you have in your cellar. Uh, pestle. Crop, no. crop. Yeah. Could be that kind of guy. <laughs> crop. 
<laughs> I'm surprised you're... Man, we, we gotta we got tie more Dota reference into real life. I, I have to apologize, I it's been at least 10 minutes and it's it's a little bit spiky on my on my end, so I'm really hoping it gets a little bit better, but um, I, I don't know why. There's technical difficulties, but... And Vanguard coming in for the crop, and I don't think we need to talk about range Vanguard in terms of what Luminous thinks about it. No, you, so got, you guys already say, know what I think about it. Uh, so, so I just gonna say, I, I think Vanguard is, is, is a pretty good decision here. Vanguard and crop is always solid, even though I sometimes like rather just to pick up a bit booster. Oh, we see a team fight going on. I better stop talking. Go ahead, Luminous. Yeah, they're gonna try to focus on less, less than half HP right now. Omni Knight trying to bring him down, but actually taking damage from the Diabog Edict. There's a heal to bring him down, but he's half HP already out of heal and repel. He's gonna go down. So one for one trade right now. But I think that trade was absolutely huge. Now without your Omni Knight, the push gets a lot harder. You lose your important source of healing and you lose your arcane boots as well so these guys are out of mana out of physical healing and that push as good as done as we see windrunner uh, being the uh, survivor of that team fight as well already working towards her mecha got the uh, buckler finish interestingly has picked up the buckler first maybe trying to counteract the effect of the uh venge terror but I, I guess she just wanted to buy the bigger component first that's generally the case we want potum regulated to farm the mid lane there and weaver where's the weaver trying to farm top as well let me check out how everyone's doing on the go before i hand the mic back to you uh, 1100 go on the uh, windrunner so very close to that mecha potum doesn't have too much but did pick up her blaze of accuracy and strength shreds and then weaver's got 20 go, sweet. Uh, meanwhile, on Sentinel, we have Phase Sweep being finished on the Sand King. Omni Knight pretty stacked already with the uh, Soul Ring and the Arcane Boot. High amount of uh, mana region for himself and his entire team. Kralbus has that Vanguard, of course. Very, very good tanky item, even for range heroes. And then we have a Hood on the Venomancer, which is a very, very smart item by considering he's up against such nuke heavy early game lineup. And it's very important that he gets off his ult before he gets chased uh, to death. So, pretty good item uh, progression for both teams so far. Very, very standard. Um, and you were talking about something epic before that team fight happened. Yes, so something epic, like I rather like to pick up the Vitality Booster and maybe go into a Lincoln's after that because that actually gives you mana region as well. I. Like usually I, I or I just go like Vitality Booster Medallion. I don't know. These days I, I don't like to pick up the full Vanguard at crop because the the block's not really worth it, I think. And it depends. Like if I'm up against a clockwork and a Furion, then I'm probably going to finish a Vanguard even on Weaver because those spells are going to harass me all over the map. Why is we see Omni Knight getting chainstar, not being able to get the repel of Omni Knight? is going and then swapping that uh, Windrunner, which looks pretty dead. Balashek is doing so much damage. Sand King Stun coming in there and go ahead. Yeah, Sand King is going to be in focus down, but the Krobless, look at the damage that the Krobless is doing right now. Arrow gets missed around, Weaver just goes down, Venom all just hitting the bottom, and bottom forced to leap out. They're going to try to pick off the Venom Master, Ignite might be able to do it. There's a power shot from the right side, and that is going to bring the Venom down. Maybe, no, he barely survived. Here comes the Ogre as well. The ult from the Exorcism ends, and that should be the end. I think after that team fight, Scourge has realized, oh shoot. We need to focus on Krobless, and that's that's the power of Krobless, and I, I kind of understood what you just meant by disagreeing with how item independent he is. She just had the Vanguard and Strength Shreds, and she just raped the entire team, and she yes. has elite strength HP pool. Strength Shreds were just finished, and, but I think it's it's just what I what I said earlier. She did exactly, she, she, she made her team tank. She didn't tank, she, she was waiting behind. When the spells were on cooldown, she was going in, and then they had, they had no spells to stop her. And and that's the problem. If if you you can't get a good initiate on Crobulus uh, or something like that, then it it can become really hard to kill her because you actually you have a team that protects the crop and yeah that that makes it really really hard. Yeah, the only way to really compensate for it is either tank up quite a bit, but it's really difficult to out tank a Crobulus because the damage on exorcism exorcism is just insane. The second way to deal really deal with this after you make the entire enemy tank all that stuff you have to have the physical damage to back it up to you know if Krabus runs in hey you just hit her a couple times and then make her go back because you're doing quite a bit of damage but right now Scourge a little bit far away from that stage of the, of the game because they don't have a lot of physical damage a Krabus illusion taking a lot of damage what they do have going for them is they have a lot of AoE as we see in the last couple of team fight the Lesh did uh, quite a bit the power shot we're doing a, a little bit as well so the AoE uh, spells are there uh, but it's going to be difficult to bring down that Krabus as we see Ogrex being picked up on the Krabus as well so going for that BKB I assume 
or or is this some crazy sage item on on Yamate? I I actually think it will be just a BKB because well BKB is obviously going to make you tanky and unstoppable against that team. Like just run in and you can even move around without the fear of of being disabled and not being able to catch up. And well, I I think so far. The, the Sand King went for face boots, which is a uh, kind of interesting decision. Uh, it's pretty good to get your stuns going, of course, but I'm not too sure if he came with maybe would have been better. But once he picks up his dagger later on, if, if he will do so, then it, it's going to be a huge, huge, huge problem for the Scourge because they, they can't just go in. Because Vino, if, if they go in and decide to go for the crop, for example, then Vino Mensa will just drop down his ult and Sand King will dig in from behind and they're going to get team wiped. It looks like Invisible Ogre has scouted out the entire Sentinel Venture Party. And here we go, Lesh doing sick amount of damage. There's a invisibility being used by the bottom, but it looks like we have only that already a half HP of is still quite tanky right now. Venomancer warding everyone away, and that was a lot of spells being exchanged. Not much kills being produced. Women are trying to flank in from the left side. Not gonna get too much done as well. And you can see the power of Lesh in this. A lot of times when we see Omni Knight runs at you with repel, you just you just run back. There's nothing you could do. But with the Lesh Diabolic Edict that which goes through magical immunity because it's a physical spell, uh, it, it actually could do a number against the Omni Knight. Omni Knight, you know, kind of like, oh shoot, I, I can't I'm not as tank as I, I, I can be. So maybe he actually pick up a, let's say a cloak, that would be okay. Maybe he'll pick up a little bit more extra HP or armor. Uh, all of it will help him tank a bit as we see a, a gank attempt on that Windrunner and if they could peel this Windrunner before the team fight happened and they will this is absolutely huge you just lost your mecha and I don't think the Scourge should uh, continue to fight no they're gonna keep doing it maybe Diffusal Potom incoming Diffusal Potom is gonna be incoming and that is gonna be absolutely crucial in terms of breaking that repel on that Omni Knight we have the arrow whiffing it right now but it looks like Lesh is trying to get that stun off very low mana on the Lesh and I think they're gonna try to turn back right now no what a, w this is an elegant dance the focus sank can Gets a three man stun. Ogre goes down immediately. Venomancer drops all on the entire Scourge team. Sand King is gonna get the kill on the Lesh and they're gonna be chasing down. Well, Sand King taking so much damage down. Exorcism is just mowing everyone down right now. Well, just the bugs. Only the bugs are alive <laughs> at this point. Potom gets an arrow, but she just have to leave at this point. So the kill on the Windrunner was just absolutely huge because that just basically forced not only the Scourge team to fight a 4v5, but a 4v5 without the mecha. And, and you know, like I said earlier... You you, you, you saw the Windrunner brought back and came in and mecha mecked everyone? Well, then then she wasted so much to go, but still, it was... Okay. It, 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 yeah, it, it wasn't was 4v5, like, sorry. Like, but it was a good move still. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Like, Sand King just got off that triple stun, Venomancer over everybody, mech on the whole Scourge team, but it just didn't matter, so... So much damage coming out of a Sentinel team, and if you guys, by the way, if you're wondering why Yamate is actually playing on a, a team called MSPR and not on, on MYM, then it's just for a LAN tournament that is... This is the final, right? Of, of some LAN tournaments, I think? I assume it is, because uh, pretty pretty well-known team, Orange. Although they haven't been doing exactly too well lately, in fact. Uh, I'm, I'm not really following them too much, though, in the... Uh, was that World Cat Ghost Cup that they're participating in the uh, Chinese or yeah, in the Asian group stage? I think they have won like they have won like two two lands or something, but on on some on like two others, I think they also got defeated in the finals. So they they're doing okay, but what 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 I I have been watching like a, lo a lot of games from Team Orange and. What I have to say so far, it, it seems they have really issues like dra drafting and, and uh, adjusting themselves to the current meta game. Like well, they're doing, they're not being successful with their drafts. Maybe, maybe it's just their playstyle, and and the playstyle that we're talking about is like picking Shadow Fiend now, which is pretty much considered a dead hero. Uh, they do like traditional trialings as we see them doing this game again, um, which definitely not really favored by the uh, EXP nerf. Uh, against you know three heroes ki getting a kill versus two hero getting a kill, so but they regardless they're playing these very traditional way traditional being a 6.69c way of playing Dota, uh, and uh, I mean if they're they're winning lands if they're making it to the tournament final they're doing something right, uh, but let's see how they're gonna be doing this game as we see Yamate going for that BKB at this point of the game already 1600 HP almost, um, sh she is. Already very tanky. Uh, I'm not too sure whether Scourge actually do that damage to bring her down. And it looks like Scourge's response is to tank up. 
Um, we have Bracers being purchased on the Torment Soul Ogre going for that urn, I presume. Potom going for a BKB with the Ogre Axe. And I think I saw Weaver also have an Ogre Axe as well. So they're going to go Mass BKB. Good news like, for Mass BKB is going to be very effective in terms of mitigating a lot of Sentinel's damage. Bad news is Krabla says, I don't care. My Exorcism will still yes. hurt the hell out of you guys. Yes, and uh, that, that's, that's what I think is... The problem from Weaver here, going BKB will help against the other heroes, but Krobus just won't care and it won't really give any damage to Weaver, just at 26 you get from BKB, which is not a lot, right? So, no. Oh, oh, Sentinel? Yeah, uh, no, so we, we've been really nice. failing to point out that there's a repel which allows the Krobulus to play a little bit more aggressively, and that would have been a very important point to point out before the bottom got the uh, Diffusal Blade, but you know, never mind, never mind, that was a little bit of. Uh, short sight on my end. Here we go. We have repel on. We have pipe on, and this tower gets siege immediately. And you can see it just after one round of, of fire from the exorcism already like down 20% health. And you can see this tower is going to go down so very rapidly. They're going to try to nuke them down and doing a fairly good job right now. We see here we go. The initiation coming in from the uh, uh, from the lesh at uh, the, uh, the crop. Oh wow! Stun gets two here right now. Potom takes the O as well. Lesh is going to be in the center of every. Everything and Lesh actually not getting focused on right now. Now he is, and he's gonna go down as we see the entire Sentinel team getting kills left and right. They're gonna try to chase down Ogre maybe, and Sank, you gotta be very careful. Gonna get a heal off from the Omni Knight, and that's that's the end of the tower. The exorcism is over, um, but no, I <laughs> we have Winter being typed in all chat. Django gets popped, and the first Rax goes down in 24 minutes to Acropolis. Yeah, yeah, that's that's because uh, Yamate is so bad. He's such a bad player. Right? Man, Yamate like, so good. Press X, X, win team fight. X being the spell of yeah, exorcism. Apparently, your crop didn't manage to do that. No, that my one. my crop. So you know so what my crop do? Up. I press I press X and self cyclone and get ultra kill. Uh, I, I don't <laughs> see crop. <laughs> I don't get see crop uh, from Yamate getting ultra kill. But look, uh, Windrunner. Gonna go down there, so Pops and Meg might be able to survive. Here comes the Lesh, Pops a Die Bong Eater, there's a Spirit Off, and they are doing so much damage. Both teams actually very capable of dealing a massive amount of damage, and Sanking is gonna go down to, to the Bucks eventually, uh, and they're gonna try to chase down the Omni Knight. Omni Knight is, oh, gonna make it out there. Uh, but that was more or less a pair of victory. Uh, they, they got a couple of kills, but they lost the Rax, and that is the important thing. In, in terms of this game, what can Scourge do to come back? It's, it's a huge margin. But what what can they do to come back? I think they can only look for ganks at the moment. And you know, the the problem is for, for the Sentinel is if if they like one key hero, then they probably can't fight. And actually I think there's four heroes on Sentinel you could gank. I think they could they couldn't they could team fight without a bench, but they couldn't team fight without someone else. So what, what Scourge has to do is actually they have to, to gank 24-7 and always try to keep one important hero there. That's that's a really hard task, but else they're just going to get their base pushed. Yeah, and but if, if they always keep, keep one, one hero dead, then well, Sentinel can't do really something about it, so... And yeah, that's that's the way to to make the game last longer. The issue of not having a proper initiator and they don't really have a good one like the best initiation is an arrow and you really can't count that the problem with that is the crop could easily just kind of walk in uh with the rest of his team and and just like go and shower and, and like what, what are you going to do about it are you going to run through a sank oh sanking avenge and an omni knight just to get to the crop it, it's difficult and now we have the another initiation on the windrunner they're going to try to focus down with a good split earth and a four staff going to keep the windrunner alive and well but here's the exorcism already pop wasting a little bit of precious time and i think this tower is not going to be long for life a lot of spell being dropped they need to pop off that lightning they need to just use that power shot and they have to try their best to kill all the creeps that the sentinels got and delay the push and hold Hopefully delay it in a point that until the no they can't do it because they don't have enough AOE at least a power shot miss a little bit and you can see that tower just goes down so quickly under Krabulus is careful guys and uh, that's yet another tower I think right now is what Sentinel or what Scourge also need to do they have a couple of seconds. At least one minute to take advantage of that crop O is down. Maybe go for a Roshan engagement, go for a more aggressive gank that you usually would, because this is this is the one time that Krabulus is human. Uh, but no, they're gonna go back and farm. I think they're missing somewhat of an opportunity there. Um 
I'm not too sure if they actually can win a team fight. Even with the crop without the crop though. Yes, I th still think it's going to be hard because also because that Omni Knight is so fat and so is that Venomancer. I, I don't see how they're gonna kill anyone on that team. There's an Omni, there's a Venomancer with a mech and a pipe, and whew, that's that's going to be tough killing someone. And they always have a swap to rescue them, and of course, Guardian Angel on the back line of everything. So yes, they have massive amount of healing, massive damage reduction, and also one of the best DPS here on the game. So this looks like a, a dream uh, combination of team, and, and the ganking for the Scourge not really panning out uh, to, to the fullest potential as we see the mid tower being sieged down as well and this is the last tower that the Scourge got, uh, the exterior tower excuse me, so uh, they need to protect this one for all it's worth. This mid tower is also very important in terms of Ro Roshan engagement if it ever happens but I think this tower would be going down soon. No, Sentinel waiting very patiently, I think they're waiting for the cooldown of the Exorcism. It is up right now, maybe they're waiting for the Sanking out cooldown as well or just the Creep Wave. Yeah, this tower is gonna go down right now. Yeah, and hmm, I, I think we're probably going to see a second Rex. We see an ultimate orb being picked up by the crop. That's that's maybe a Lincoln's, but probably it's a Hex, I guess. So, at, at the moment, do you think uh, Scourge can still win this? Mm. It's looking grim. Um, I I don't think their item choices is going to be... I feel like the BKB would be nice at a later stage of the game, where... Where you actually do the enough damage to warrant the per BKP per purchase. Because right now, like you could pop the BKB, and I think Karabla says, okay, I pop my BKB too, and let's see who dies quicker. And I bet you the Potom and the Weaver will die quicker. So, like, I think they, I mean, if you want to survive against Krob, you buy armor. Uh, I don't think BKB is the answer. Uh, I understand that they buy the BKB for the rest of the team, but, you know, the rest of the team says... Really, we, we're not really doing most of the damage here, so I'm not too sure what the item choice of Scourge is leading into, and, and because of these item choices, I don't think they could win the game. Almost as good as your item choices as I am, and we see, uh... <laughs> actually... What? Uh, well, nothing. Okay, so... And we see, uh... Well... Well, the, the Scourge team knows right now, they are, they are in huge trouble and they are actually trying everything to get some good fights going as just dropping down a, a Observer Ward on the hill in front of their tower. I think they also... I think they had a ward in it as well, uh, in front of the first tower, but apparently that one got countered. And they, they are warding really defensive and they are warding in a way that give, it gives them advantage in a fight because they know if they are going to lose one more fight, the game's over. I'm super oh Shackle Shot is gonna hit two heroes. It's not gonna mean too much of anything. They're gonna just try to delay the push as much as possible. There was a ward that spotted the Venge um, solo by herself right next to the shop, but it looks like the Scourge team even didn't want to jump on that. So uh, what that just shows like if you don't want to jump on a solo Venge when you have three hero and because you're afraid that the other team is gonna come in, basically you just wanna you don't wanna do anything except turtle. But it's going to be difficult to turtle against them. You see the pipe popping, and that's going to give the free ticket onto the high ground. You see the crop actually going to lead the charge in because she has a BKB. She doesn't care. Blink Sanking O comes in right now. Crop pops a BKB. Whoa, crop dying very quickly right now. Hex uh, uh, dust being popped as well, and there's a Guardian Angel. And the physical DPS of the Scourge getting completely ignored. We do see the Sanking going down right now, but crop, her bugs are just doing so Her locust bugs. L look at this tower. Uh, glyph gets popped, but once the Glyph goes down, tower is going to go down. No, it, it looks like Scourge is actually doing a fairly good job in terms of defending. The tower is still up. Exorcism is over at this point, so they survived long enough. But unfortunately, they are losing too many heroes. They're losing too much ground. I think we have the Weaver. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the Weaver is going to come back in. It looks like they are going to defend. They're gonna focus down on the Omni Knight. Gets the arrow there as well. Good chain thunder, And they might even pick off the Ogre. No, yeah, they pick off the Venomancer as well. So they defend this very, very well done. Weaver going on the Venge era as well, I, ew, they, they, I think they might be on the verge of a comeback, but is this a little bit too much too late? They are going to get an entire team wide as Yamate goes down as well. So one for four exchange, and they only lost a base tower. So this is actually a very good team fight. Orange pulling something out magical. I, I, I didn't expect happened at all. Uh, yeah, it was actually a pretty pretty good day. They got that kill on Omni Knight so quickly. Also, the Sand King out was was on the Lashrek only, who was back in the fight later. 
So that didn't do too much. And well, of course, ten, 10 seconds BKB helps a lot against Venomancer ult. But as as the BKB duration will will be getting smaller and smaller, Venomancer ult will start doing more and more again. And even though they won that team fight, I think I think the next push, the Rex will be gone. Yeah, the scourge needs to be something magic. I mean, it, this shows that they could win the team fight. But the thing is, they they have. They have, they're out of buffer zone, if you if you know what I'm saying. Their last buffer zone was that tower. Uh, they There's no more buffer zone for that rack, so they got to save up for a glyph and win, have to win that team fight very, very rapidly, focus down very, very quickly. But given that she has a BKB and a lot of HP, I don't think that's possible. You might could try to get her through f physically, through the her lack of armor. She's only got five armor. Of course, there's going to be more if the mecha is popped and everything. Um, but right now, Scourge doesn't do too much physical damage. They have BKB on the bottom, which, I mean, you look at look at the bottom, only 160 damage, which isn't, isn't, which isn't high at all at this stage of the game. The Weaver, only 140 something, which is nothing at this point of the game either. So, all of the Scourge's physical DPSers are not really doing enough to bring down Acropolis. But if they could win enough team fights where they could turn along enough to maybe finish a Yasha or even Manta, then they will have the chance to win the game. But I think Skir uh, Sentinel realized that as well, so they're going to just win the game right now. And I don't think there's too much Skirt to do about it. Yes, and uh, what do you think about Sanction Yasha on Omni Knight? I think it's pretty they rad. No, it's pretty good. Okay. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, okay, okay, and then. Um, Alright. Yeah, Weaver jumps in right now, pops case. the BKB, trying to focus against 3 or 4, he needs to use a time lapse, and he does, but actually, he, he, look at his HP, he's just kind of, no, oh, still pretty okay right now, Sanking drops, that stun, but there's so much stuff happening right now, and it looks like MSPR is going to be the victorious one, Potom with the BKB pop, trying to focus 1v4, going to be leaping out just fine, Winrun needs to get out there as well, and here comes Sanking, gets, oh, uh, where's the Burrow Strike, there's the Burrow Strike kill against the Potom, and unfortunately, MSPR is going to be winning the fight, Crowbless did end up going down, so that was good focus from the Scourge, isolating out, but it was just too late. I mean, the, the Sentinel support, like you can see how stacked this Vanmancer is, how stacked this Omni Knight is, they are just absolutely fat right now. And uh, even though you brought that to Crowbless, these guys, are they do enough damage to just carry out the game, and, and that's the second Rex. Yep, and we uh, have a bit of engagement going on here again. Uh, Shaker Shot. Going only on, no, actually going on the Omni Knight, but I think he repelled himself while it was in the air. <laughs> and MSPR calling for safe here. I don't know what, what experience those guys had with Team Orange. Uh, well, Yamate play with Mushi. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 on that, they were at least former teammates. You teammate. got special tactics? Pl plug when you got two wrecks? Plug online when you got two wrecks? <laughs> Spe safe. Special tactic, go fly for a T-Rock, yeah, I guess. This is the land, right? I, I think so, yeah. So, so. yeah, just uh, right. trip, trip cable accidentally, man. Didn't Dendi do that <laughs> once in, in a land? Did he? I don't know. I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. There, I, Oh, I, I think it was like game one of... No, I, there was one tournament where one replay wasn't released and it was apparently a very good game because Dendi apparently spilled water. And it made a game drop, they made like short circuit or <laughs> something like that. It was then someone from from DTS or, or M5 or Navi, something like that. So legit. Uh, legit, man. That's that's how the best way to ruin a game. Like you ain't even playing. Just walk there with water and be like, "Oops, we're yet, guys." <laughs> oh man. Nice. Oh, which by the um, way, there's one thing I need to address, which has nothing to do with this game. I, I, I said joking, very joking. Oh, I'm I'm gonna. Take a one month break from commentating, and yeah. everyone and took it, it like, "Oh my actually, god!" It's two months. It's two months. It's actually. Yeah. It's actually <laughs> uh, no, guys. I can you guys imagine me taking a one month? break? I can't even imagine myself taking one month break because I have a weekly show. How can I take a one month break with a weekly show? Right. So. Well, man, Asian logic. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, and that's, that's so good. Yeah. So there we go. I mean, I mean. I, Guys, you serious? WDC, WDC, ESW, okay. ESWC. I can't take a one-month break. Shoot. SMM, that's that's who? Yeah, impossible. And uh, also uh, ICS offline finals. A yeah. bit of European Dota, but I don't. I, the team list not that impressive. To be honest. <sighs> don't get me. Don't get me started on ESWC, man. I'm just like. 
raging. Well, I, I was I was talking about ICS finals right now, but oh, yeah, but ESWC, ESWC too. I, I don't like it as well. Yeah, ESWC is so shit. Yeah, yeah. but uh, WDC quite cool. Okay, no LGD, fuck it, but still. Oh, wait, are are they getting voted in or is DK? I think DK, DK got voted in. Ah right? oh, man, because they're getting getting new pictures. I mean, who doesn't want new picture of DK <laughs> members, right? So can't can't compete with that one. Oh, legit. Burn, burning new picture. <laughs> burning new picture. Nice. <laughs> Alright, here we go. The final push is going to be a swap goals on a Weaver right now. Pops the BKB, but a half HP needs to time lapse very quickly. Use your time lapse, bro. No, he doesn't. Now he can't even time lapse anymore. We have a blame mail BKB on that crop. Says, Where you at? And wins the team fight all by herself right now. Winman are trying to do a little bit of backstabbing right now, but she got to be careful. As we see a blink ult coming in, there's a Winman going down. Ogre taking significant amount of damage, and he is going to go down as well. An entire team wipe well, just three kills going against Sentinel, but the mid tower, mid racks is going to be taken down, and that should be the game. And maybe even the final, if this was the final. Was this the final? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it was the final. So so MSPR claiming the win here, getting carried by Amate, and I I just gonna link you that that King Surf movie because you say uh, like yeah. Yamate oh wow, so cool. King Surf movie so pro man. Yamate three divine raper destroyed the wrong. I have seen that movie. It's just oh. I mean come on, who hasn't done that? I've done that. Three divines okay, destroyed so, the wrong. So. Easy. 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 Okay. Actually, actually, I had like. I had a period of playing pubs on Dota League, only going for either playing Windrunner or Co-op, and then then always going for Face Boots Divine, like only nothing else, Legit. nothing fucking else. Standard. And it, it worked out. It's pretty it good, man. You walk in and you kill them. I like that plan. Yep. Okay. Okay. So so end of analysis. Don't need. Don't need. Yamate too good. No, seriously, okay. I think I think Sentinel won because Scourge didn't get their ganks off. I, I feel like their item choice are a little weak. And maybe this game showcased how strong Quabliss is against particular lineups, especially lineups without the initiation. If you allow Quabliss team to fight a team fight on her terms, it's just too difficult to, to beat it. You need a Venge, you need a Clock, you need a Bat. A, you need some sort of hard initiation to bring down that Quabliss very quickly. If you don't have that, tough luck. You're not going to win team fights. so... That's that's right. all I have to say. Uh, okay, and I, I all I have to say is, re league release replays. Yes. 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 And oh yeah, oh yeah, oh uh, yeah, seven one five. Thank you for allowing me to join your commentary. I had a blast. Uh, hopefully, oh, I'll be yes. invited back in the future to. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we 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 gotta take some time after this talking about this. Okay, I'm sorry, like, man. I, I'm just pretty. Okay, whatever. I, I don't want to flame you in the public, so. Okay. So uh, why don't you uh, close it off? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. This is uh, 715 and uh, Bad Luminous signing out. See you guys. Rick, comment, subscribe, guys.